Today's episode is completely stacked. So much happened, you're gonna love it. Now, before we jump into it, I wanna quickly say apologies for the fireworks you may hear in the background. It's just, you know, um, locally a celebration's going on and you might hear pops in the background, so that's what that is. Anyway, if you haven't seen the last episode, guys, go check it out in this career mode episode in the McLaren Return to Glory because spoilers are ahead and the last race at Silverstone was pretty special in qualifying. Anyway. As for now, we have a contract renegotiation and we are going to try to renew our contract with a medium risk, which will give us a pretty hefty, you know, bit of cash to spend. And with the new patch now in effect, reduced R&D points are working correctly. So because we haven't done it yet, we are going to go ahead and purchase Dev Feedback 1, which gives us a 10% increase to R&D points to help us out. So now things are kind of much more aligned and make a lot more sense. This weekend, we have a supplier upgrade for the lightweight pistons, which gives us a bit more engine power, which is great arriving at Spa. We're going to add to that by doing a ultimate chassis upgrade for Zanvolt. So hopefully uh, that will arrive and that will pretty much lock us in as the best team on the chassis department. We then had the after effects of the marketing event, which we done in the last episode regarding merch, which has some pretty good effects, gave us a bit more cash flow and things were looking pretty good. And we then had confirmation of the Energy Star upgrade arriving, which is one that we have been waiting for for a while. We only have two of those all season and it has arrived for this race. So we are going to put a new Energy Star in place on the car for the race or more importantly for the sprint and qualifying after practice. So speaking of which, you can see we have a fair bit of rain for the race, uh, which could be spicy, potentially rain at the end of qualifying maybe, um, but for the race, definitely towards the end, which could be interesting. As for development, we are now the third best team, guys. We're taking steps forward. Aston Martin, number one, Red Bull, number two, and we are number three. Although, to be fair, if you look further back, Alpine have actually really closed the gap, and Alfa Romeo, to be fair, and to some extent, Alfa Tauri also trying their best to cut the gap. So the field is still constantly tightening up, but up front, we are third, which is the highest we've ever been in this series so far. I'm pretty sure we've never been that high before, so that is a real sign of progress. Now, as for practice, we had a very good session. Tire wear was great. Fuel consumption was surprisingly low, and when practice finished, we then moved on to the brand new energy store and also a brand new control electronics. We only have two of these. This is round 12, I believe, of 23, so more or less a halfway point, so now it makes sense to switch these you know, in terms of components and go for the newer ones as it is a power circuit. And yeah, we're going to jump into qualifying and get into the real important parts of this video and get to work because, you know, it's a sprint weekend. There's a lot get to get through. And we're also in sync with the real life calendar, which is really awesome. So let's get to work. Q1 currently on in the background. We have soft tires on our car and we're going to see what we can do for a banker lap in this one. Now, at that point, I wanted to get a bit of a reference to understand where Lando was and what sort of pace he's putting in. Qualifying at Silverstone last race, guys, was a real performance. We pulled out some real big laps, and last race was the first time we used a custom setup, and I'm also using a custom one here. I'm using Yano Otmir's time trial setup in the leaderboards on PC. And we go P5, which was really good. Eventually, we got knocked down to P11, so I went for a second attempt. Now, on the second attempt, for some reason, my delta was a bit bugged out, it didn't register my first lap, it registered my in-between lap. Um, either way, I didn't really know what I was on in terms of lap time, if it was good or bad, but we improved the P10, I think we went about a tenth quicker. So not a whole lot of improvement, but still um, in the sub 140s, and we're currently P10. Now Albon's on the cutoff with the 115, and we're currently safe by about half a second, but there's faster cars behind, Bottas, Russell, and co. However, I stayed in the garage, didn't go back out, and it paid off. We save a set of tyres and we get through comfortably by a tenth and a half. The big knockout, the big scalp in that one was Alex Albon, which was a big surprise. And to be fair, done me a favour because had Albon set a normal lap time, he would have easily got out of the drop zone. So very lucky there to get away with that one. And we see Q2 for the second race in a row. So happy with that. And speaking of which, because we saved a set of tyres, we can go for two fresh tyre runs in Q2. Now this is the first lap. Only if we're going for a single flyer, that's how much fuel we have. And across the line, it's a 39.3, which is half a second quicker than what we've done in Q1. We go P7, now P8, as we've got shuffled down the order. Now, go back to the garage. We are safe, but only by a half a tenth. Realistically, we have to go out again. We're not safe. We need more, and we're going to have to improve. So, 
yeah. Final run in Q2, another fresh set of tyres, and this is the one we saved from Q1. And we're going to see if we can try and make it back-to-back -back Q3 appearances, which would be special. Qualifying the Silverstone last episode was insane. We delivered some absolute bangers to get into Q3 and even our Q3 lap itself. So hopefully we can repeat. And that's just 30 seconds left in the session. Some of that in this one here today. So turn one, not the best. I was a bit cautious with my approach. I did actually now turn one the last attempt to be fair pretty much perfectly. Uh, regardless, making our way up through Eau Rouge and Radion, we do cut the deficit a little bit to 400 as we close out the first sector. But sector two is where the lap time is. So spot the 50 metre board, that's your braking point reference. Brake on the kerb, down a fourth gear, lots of inside kerb through the right and the left. Try to get the power down, smooth through Melmody as the checkered flag drops. Turn eight, Ravage, brake at the kerb. Third gear, quickly back up to fourth on the short shift, turn nine. Important to also get the inside curb here to rotate the car, just clip the green stuff on the inside. And we do that beautifully as we're up now by a tenth and a half. They're heading into Puon. Quick downshift, a very small lift, pretty much almost flat through there as we carry that advantage into the Fania chicane. Fifth gear, let the car float through the first one. Sacrifice it a little bit to get the exit through the second one. Stavlo one. Fourth gear, we just nicked the inside curb there enough to get some rotation and the exit was on point and now we're actually a tenth and a half up, which I said incorrectly before, I was half a tenth up, not a tenth and a half up. Anyway, blunt you want flat out and get ready for the bus stop. Now for this one, you want to try and brake as the curb begins on the left, so approximately 100 meters, possibly just after to be fair, uh, somewhere in that region. Third gear, let the car float with the brake bias and let the rear brake do the work get the drive and the traction across the line we go p12 up to p6 and into q3 with an absolute stonker yet again and only a tenth off lando norris the pace hasn't been too bad this weekend although again we have been a good half a second off lando but a bit like silverstone it's happening again we are finding some pace in qualifying with the custom setup and we are starting to really put on some incredible laps and my qualifying which I don't think it's been that bad in this game, even though the positions haven't shown it. I think I'm getting stronger. I really am. Either way, Q3, this was a used set of tyres for our banker lap. And, of course, we did a, a, a 39-0 in Q2. We a 39-2 on that exact same set of tyres on a second time lap, which really isn't that bad at all for a Q3 banker. P10, though, last place, so we have to go again. And this is now burning up our last set of tyres. So, guys, enjoy the lap, and hopefully... It's better than the one in Q2. Oh, well, there we go. A very, very good lap. A personal best, a 138.8. In fairness, I couldn't have done much more. I feel like that was pretty much perfect. Um, no more time to find on that one. Felt like a really smooth and very nice lap to drive. Lando P4 and the AI just basically leveled up 
the top six or top seven, should I say, um, just found another level, another gear when it mattered the most and we just couldn't match them. So yeah, I'm not mad about it. We maximized qualifying back to back Q3s, which is always a good thing. And, you know, also not just that, but pretty much doing perfect laps in the last two races or qualifying sessions to you know pull out these q3 appearances so i'm very happy in terms of us maximizing what the car can do in a one lap situation the ai just have a bit more than me simple as that you know with 110 and whatever you want to call it they just have a bit more pace for now though we then went into practice too got a bunch of discounts we also maximized the rd points and yeah things are looking good guys for the race and crucially the sprint so yeah speaking of which we're going to jump into the sprint race put the soft tires on, go aggressive, and we're going to see if we can try and fight our way up and potentially break a top five for the race. That would be the ideal scenario. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting sprint. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Norris, Bottas, Verstappen, Russell, Ocon, Martinez, Hamilton, Gasly, Oscar Piastri, Joe, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Magnussen, Albon, Theo Porcher, Sargent, and Nick de Vries. And with preparations almost complete, let's head trackside for today's sprint. Here we go then, time for the sprint, part one of the race weekend. Let's see how it goes. We're going to start on the soft tire and try to be aggressive. We'll save the harder compounds for the main race, which I think are going to be the better race tire. We'll take information from this sprint and learn a few things, carry it into the race as usual. But yeah, target for this one would be a nice little top six. That'd be ideal. I think it's nine laps, so hopefully we can make it worth it and make it a good one. Right, let's get to work. Eight laps. Get the rev sorted out. And away we go. Russell bogs down on the medium. Excellent start. Hamilton has a flyer on the medium, to be fair. Into turn one, we lock the rears a little, but we go through. And that's. Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the internal combustion engine. Be aware that we're going to start to see a loss of power. That's P7. Lando side by side. Up through a rouge with Perez. Signs breaking away out front. And so we're going to get into a massive drag race and slipstream fest. Ocon lurking behind, but we're not going to defend, no need. Let's see if I can try and get a bit of a cut back here. Bottas slow, and we get him. Just like that, using the soft heart. Trying to go on the outside of Leclerc, but not quite able to find the grip there. Lando up to P2, Perez down a third. Lando's flying, man. He's really improved his last few races. Hopefully, we can get good points as a team. For now, though, we're going to try and see if we can hold on. Bottas putting the pressure on behind. This will also give me an idea as to what our true pace really is and if we have a chance this weekend. Hopefully, it's a bit better than Silverstone. That's all I want, really, just to, you know, compete and have a chance to compete. So, yeah, we'll use the battery here, which is where the AI usually don't use it, but in this case, Bottas making an exception and going for it. I'm flat out. I've got no, no more straight line speed, so that is the Ferrari just legit straight line speed pace gonna hold it on the inside as Leclerc passes Verstappen the Red Bulls I think may drop back they haven't had the best pace this season everyone's on soft besides Bottas that's good to know let's see if we can try and make some progress that was a really good turn one actually this might give us a chance to get Verstappen break into the top five which would be excellent here we go. Battery on. No DRS just yet. Struggling to get up to Verstappen, but now we're side by side. Down the inside we go. And then we're going to let him try to go side by side with us. We're going to take that position straight away. And that is us into the top five. Excellent stuff so far. Okay, DRS will be enabled this lap. You can use it when you're within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. We're not going to have it. Leclerc is pushing ahead. Actually, we may... No, we didn't. I think we just lost out there. Our turn one is very good, but I think we just missed out. Yes, we did. So, no DRS. 
We'll see if the three cars ahead battle. That might bring us into play. I also don't know what Tyre Signs is on, to be fair, out front. Well, I think I might have DRS this time. Having to use all the battery. But I think we've got it. Just. Yes, we have. It's not going to help us much with no ERS, but it's something. Let's snap and look at the closing speed. Don't really have battery. So even though we've got DRS, we're going to have to let that one go. And they're trying to break away from Checo, but nothing's happening. We need them to battle or catch signs and make it a four-car scrap. Pace is good, though. We are competitive here. Much better than Silverstone. What well, task may well get the run of me here. He's using battery. The AI seemed to have... An endless supply, whereas I'm having to recharge. Bottas going through. I'm not going to let it happen. We're going to fight and stay ahead. Well, we're going to have to drain everything here, thanks to Bottas. We've lost all contact with Verstappen. Bottas trying to go past. So we're going to have to use all the batteries, but we are lacking straight line speed around here. Uh, the AI are better than us. And they're also faster in the middle sector where the corners are, so doesn't really make any sense. I don't understand how I can fight when they're stronger in the straights and stronger in the corners. There's nothing I can do on setup to help beat that. Okay, we've got four laps of fuel remaining. Literally a recipe that's impossible to beat. I think we're going to lose the RS on the here as well. Yeah, Max now turn one. Oh, long, long couple of races, these ones. Not over yet, though. Just need that battle ahead to kick off. It's not kicking off. Yeah, I think the tar advantage is now starting to be lost. Bottas going for the feint. Doesn't commit, which is just going to cost me time. This really isn't going according to plan. They're battling ahead, but I can't even cash in because I'm not fast enough. I need the RS. Okay, Bottas is going to go by here. I'm not going to waste the battery. I don't have enough to defend down to the bus stop. That AI have just an endless amount. Also, the slipstream is really strong here. So we'll sit behind and we'll try and get him on the camel straight and basically secure P6 for the main race. Which is still decent. I'll take that. Obviously hoping for a bit more, but it is what it is. Let's stay nice and close here. Keep it nice and tidy. But yeah, I also gonna be in full power mode now, so even more important that I am the car chasing, not the one defending. It's funny though, when I'm following someone, I feel like they're super slow, but then when I'm in front, I can't seem to pull away. It's really weird how it works. Anyway, I mean, this wasn't possible when I was in front. Bottas was just eating me up. Now though, we can fire back. And just like that, we're back through. This seems really easy, but then when I'm in front, I get destroyed. All right, here we go, the final sprint. I'm not using the battery yet, I'm gonna wait. And now we'll start to drain it. Lando demoted to P4 as Leclerc and Perez has got ahead. Perez is pulled away now. Bottas, side by side with us here as we go through Bonchamont. Using the rest of the battery here to get in front. And our car now with the lunge as we extend the braking zone and make our car nice and wide and we'll lock in a P6 for the main race, which is okay. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part Fermi. Welcome to this visit to the Ardennes countryside. Spa-Francorchamps hosted its first Grand Prix back in 1925, and this historic track is loved by drivers and fans alike. And us here in the commentary box too. So it's a warm welcome from the Belgian Grand Prix. Spa-Francorchamps then, a historic 19-corner circuit with a lap distance of 4.35 miles. There's over 100 meters of elevation change here, and with long stretches of the lap spent flat out, a good top speed will be vital for success. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Norris, Verstappen, Martinez, Ocon, Hamilton, Russell, Gasly, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Sonoda, Joe, 
Hulkenberg, Albon, Theo Porcher, Bottas, De Vries, and Logan Sargent. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat is Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching out for as they head into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start, and this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space, and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. Right then, here we go. Time for the main race. We're starting P6, which basically means no grid drops for anybody. So we're starting where we finish the sprint, which is fine. We're in the mix and uh, hopefully we can compete in the race. Now, there's one big factor here and that is rain. Rain is forecast for the end of the race. It could arrive earlier. You never know. So we're going to start in the medium and that's why I wanted to burn the softs in the sprint because I wanted to have the harder compounds available for the race for this very scenario. So We'll see how it goes. The plan is to stay on mediums all the way until the rain arrives, pretty much. Fuel-wise, I'm going to go for a little bit less than usual because of that rain arriving. I'm going to go for 1.2. I don't want to go too low in case I you know, get in trouble at backfires. But based off the sprint, fuel consumption was pretty decent. So yeah, uh, 1.2 laps extra. Now, um, besides that, I want to try and see if I can keep up. Hopefully, the pace is better on the medium. And yeah, fingers crossed we can try and stay in DRS. Race management is going to be key even if I'm not in DRS range, like in the sprint, if I'm just close enough for the cars ahead, we can still fight with the weather transition at the end. So that's going to be a key, key point. But yeah, let's get into it. Hopefully, Lando is a strong race. I'd love a double podium, and that is going to be the objective. So let's get into it, and let's send it. So one thing I want to do really quickly before we get into it, weather forecast. Conditions look stable at the moment. No rain currently expected. Okay, dry seem like the best tyre for now. That's good news. Hopefully those on softs may pit before the rain arrives, which would help. Here we go then. This is going to be a key start. Lots are on. Perfect revs. We're snapping bogs down. And that is an easy position to gain. I'm going to keep my car in the middle of the track at turn one to avoid being lunged. Norris Leclerc. Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the internal combustion engine. Be aware that we're going to start to see a loss of power. But with Merck's behind on soft tyres, they're going to be very tough to stop. Lando through on Leclerc, which is good. Sainz still leads the weight, and Perez second. I say these boys arriving, but not in time, as Leclerc tries to challenge Norris on the outside, but doesn't pull it off. So Lando holds on to third, which is a good start for him, and also one for me. So we both gain places. Let's see if we can make this a good race for us. I'm actually really strong in two thirds of the lap, but I lose so much through Puon and the next three corners after that, which is the, the real time loss I have around it. You can just see our bleed time, and this is going to give Hamilton a possible run. I'm going to gradually move over to not incentivize him to go through, but this is where I struggle to match that AI's pace in this section. After this, we're okay. Although even then on the straight on speed front, we're looking a bit slow. Here we go then. Hamilton lurking, looking for a pass. Doesn't get through though. We've got a little bit of ICE wear to contend with, to be fair. Could have addressed that before the weekend started, but I didn't realise. The Merc is nowhere near as fast as the Ferrari on the straight, which is nice. That's good to note. Right, so far, pace is great. We're keeping up much easier than the sprint. Medium is a better tyre. I'm more competitive and it seems like the heavier tanks also play to my advantage. Hamilton can't really get close and we're keeping up with Leclerc and Norris beautifully. Lando's trying to break but it's hard to pull a gap. Out front Perez refusing to put a move on signs although that might change. So maybe the front two scrap a bit and drop them back. That would also be a welcome little bonus. This race is going perfectly so far. Everything's bubbling away beautifully and we're keeping up. And I'm also able to keep battery on side, which is something I couldn't do in the sprint. That's the real key factor here. I'm able to manage the battery and that makes me competitive. The other further back doesn't really affect us, but there could be a safety car, which could make things interesting. Looks like a Williams. Oh, we bottomed out on the curb. That wasn't very nice. We think we 
might see some rain. ETA, about 15 minutes. Right. That's the case. That's perfect. Those on soft will have to bail out on strategy. I don't know what tyre signs and Perez are out front, but that plays right into our hands. Although we're going to have to drag these on for a while, and that might, you know, have to be a bit of pain on tyre wear. Lando just dropping back a little bit and has lost the RS on signs to the point where Leclerc is actually going to try and put a move on. So just a bit of a, a transition here, and now we're getting some action. Leclerc through. To be fair, it's a clean move, so don't entirely mind it. Just going to stay in line for now. This is working for us. I'm charging battery at a nice rate, so we'll stick with the game plan. I'm starting to believe we could ever win this race, even on pace. Hamilton now going for it. I wonder who he's going to pit, because he hasn't had that sort of straight-line speed all race, so that would indicate full power mode. We're going to fire back there around the outside and hold our own. Lewis could be pitting. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, he stays out. So Lewis getting a move on now by the looks of it. So a bit of a second win for the Mercs and that soft tyre. Interesting. Nowhere near rain as it stands right now. So we're going to have to go long in this stint. Oh. Some information on Magnussen for you. They're retiring from the race. Magnussen... Out, again, no safety car VSC, don't entirely mind. This is bobbling away okay. The front two are breaking away again, but the close trying to keep them in check. We'll see how that works out. I wonder when the guys on softs are going to pit. That's the real question I have. Surely at some point in the next two laps. Okay, expect to see some rain about 10 to 15 minutes from now. All right, what that means is the next update will be five minutes time so still a while away yet this could be a an interesting one could be a stretch to get the medium to make it onto wet tires although we've got this entire wear it's going to be pain worth taking i think and i think we could actually win this on that strategy i think everyone is going to pit i think it's not going to arrive in time so that would be our gamble stay out while everyone else pits another set of dryers and hope that we can pit for inches Oh, here we go. Signs in. He started on softs. Hamilton also pits, so this is it. Let's see how this affects things. So Checo's on mediums. That would explain why Signs couldn't re-overtake him. And now Perez pits also on soft tyres. Interesting. So our pace was actually really good. Lando's out of the RS range of... Push now. We're boxing this lap. Charles Leclerc. Leclerc's going to be in full power mode here, I think. So we're going to have to... Pass Lando for the greater good. I want to try and not let Leclerc get away. So we'll prepare the overtake and use the overspeed to basically close in on Leclerc. Like so. Here we go. We'll use all the battery. Okay, Lando. Well, this space would be nice, mate. Well, that's the move done. Lando won't be in full power mode because I'm pitting according to the game. So. He's theoretically pitting on the next lap. If I stay out, he'll be staying out another lap. So Lando could not be in for another two laps yet, at least. If the Rainer were to arrive in that time, that would be ideal. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think Lando's still going to pit for drives, which is a real shame. So Leclerc's going to pit. He's been in full power mode the whole lap. And there we go. Lando stays out with me, of course, as I'm not pitting. Well, based off the pace of Lando, I think he may be pitting on this lap. I'm using the battery. He's in full power mode, definitely. So I'm basically giving him a nice little sit stream here and DRS on this lap. So I'm not saying he's going to overcut anyone by any means, but it might help him hold position. Crossed up there on the braking. But Lando does pit. So we're going to be on our own. Lando's in the pits. Lando in the pits. And now... We wait for the rain to see if it arrives. Clouds are starting to form, but will it arrive in time? The rain's a few lap outs yet, but it is coming, so be careful. Yes, yeah, inbound. It's getting darker by the second. Lando lost a lot of places with that strategy, but the only upside, he may be able to pit and we won't have to stack. So he may gain that back. Tyro icon has popped up, which means we've got tires over 60%. So we are running out of time here. Rain needs to arrive because we are actually running out of tyres. 
and all four of them are pretty similar wares, so we do not want to go into puncture territory. I do not want to puncture with this strategy, that would ruin everything. There we go, rain falling. Little rain streaks on the car. Now we wait to see how long this rain's gonna take. I could have maybe hit there. The track feels a little bit delicate. Okay, those tyres are gonna fall off the cliff soon. Take extreme care. Hmm. I'm gonna pit this lap, whatever happens. I don't have tyres to go longer. I'll try and keep Perez behind using all the battery, as this is going to be the key point of the race. Understood. Stopping this lap. Checo goes through. I'm going to hold my own. Let my car wide. This is a lap. This is a lap. Okay, be mindful of the conditions. The track's getting wetter. Recommend you stay out for now, though. We'll be much slower if we move on to inters this early. Checo tried to go through, had to defend. Left space on the inside, Checo again looking to go through. Gonna hold the inside line. Checo's still there, eating space. Gotta try and race to the pits and get there first. Track isn't fully, fully inters, but I have to go for it. The gonna keep getting heavier for the next 15 minutes at least. We'll go to the right hand side, which will be the inside line for the bus stop. Now in a drag race with Checo. Fuel is running thin. Okay, that's us with five laps of fuel remaining. Five laps of fuel left. Oh god, that's not ideal. I'll take a repair. This may still be worth it. Cars are pitting behind us. Or not? No, they're not. We're the only car in. Right, this is it. Oh, that brakes on was so sketchy in the bus stop. This could still be worth it, but we need the rain to now basically hit straight away. 7.5, away we go. Oh boy, this is clutch. Has that lockup cost us potentially a race win? That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Let's go. We'll have these cars ahead as a reference in terms of pace. Okay, it's time for inches. Track has changed. The is not disabled, but we're quicker. Will the AI try and stay out to the end on dries? I wonder if that's something they'll go for. So far, everyone's staying out. And the rain's picking up. I mean, it's still four laps to go. That's a long way to go on dries. If you're going to try and make that gamble work. I wish I could tell Lando to pit. I really wish I could. But we're now going to have the advantage. That was the lap for the AI to pit, and they haven't. So now we're going to really eat them up in terms of pace. No DRS, but it doesn't really matter. Bottas, slight contact with Albon. We're going to switch to the outside and get him. The grip difference is there right now. Let's try and get these Haas boys. Hulkenberg won't have DRS. We will. We'll get the double effect from Albon. We'll use all the battery here. Fuel's a little bit marginal, but we should still be able to push. Wow, that was the limiter. I've never had that before in this game. That sounded horrible. Absolutely horrible. Right, we're losing valuable time. We have to go here. Right, we've got enough fuel for three more laps. The drives are somehow holding on. Got through an album we go. Gonna go Hulkenberg as well. This is where the grip is. Right, let's keep pushing in case I do choose to pit on this last lap before it gets too wet. Yeah, they're staying out to the end. Hold on to your hats, folks. This is going to be a grandstand finish. The other thing I want to find out. Okay, conditions are going to keep deteriorating for 10 minutes at least. We're not certain which is the best tyre right now, dries or inters. Signs out of the race. Yellow flag. Caution, caution. Oh, well, there's no signs spun. So, mistake from Carlos. We'll be on to him. Okay, clear. ASAP. Here we go. Got to try and clear signs quickly. This is going to be close, so we cannot afford to waste any time. Signs defend. But we go through. This is going to be really close. If I don't ever win the race, there's a lot of cars to get through. But we just got to try and get as many places back as possible. We need the track to keep getting worse. Hold on to your hat, folks. A lap to go. This is going to be 
frantic. I feel bad for Lando, to be honest. P10 for Lando is not what I hoped for. Okay, conditions are going to keep deteriorating for 10 minutes at least. Yep. Let's get to it then. We're going to have to send it on this last half. I don't think we're going to win the race unless someone makes a mistake. Piastri, Ocon, side by side. Maybe we can disrupt their rhythm a bit. Alright, that's two more down. Two more down. We're going to have to keep pushing here. Russell, Gasly, Verstappen next up. All three of these could fall. Okay, we've only got one lap of fuel remaining. We're going to have to nail the middle second. We could still win this. Checo, though, has a healthy margin. P2 is possible, without a doubt. But I want to win this now that we've committed to this strategy. AI now in full power mode, so they're going to be pretty slippery and pretty quick on the straight. Did we send it on PA here? Damn right we do. Got to clear this happen here before turn eight. On the outside, there we go. Right, push, push, push. This is going to take a massive effort to gain. Here we go then. We're going to get close to Leclerc and Hamilton through here. I think Perez has got this. He's got too much of a gap. What a weekend from Checo Perez. Will be so strong for the bus stop. We'll get past these too easily. But oh, I really want to win this race. I'm gutted. Gamble almost paid off. Just got to find a bit of space here to negotiate both of these guys. And there we go. Just like that. Checo wins. And P2 for us. Still decent points. But ah. Great drive, great drive. Everyone here is really happy with that performance. Well done, mate. Victory for the team from Milton Keynes then, after a quality performance. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, they certainly stood out as a drive with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Right, there we go then. Race done, sprint done. What a weekend for Sergio Perez. Where did that come from? I have no idea. Checo 4.0 strikes. And to be fair, I'm not mad about it. We were the second highest point scorer this weekend. I feel bad for Lando. Um, I just wish I could have the control to tell the team, no, Lando pits, not me, whatever. You know, that, that needs to be in the game. That feature has to be a thing because it would benefit us so much in so many situations like this. Either way, uh, yeah, final race results, confirmation. We beat Leclerc, who's our rival. That's the main target, of course. Oh, frustrating. I think in the end, the wing damage cost us. Had we not had wing damage, we could have won the race. And that is annoying. Very annoying. It's a 7.5 stop. A usual stop in their drive is 2.2. So... Yeah, could have easily done it, which is really annoying. We could have actually cleared um, Hulkenberg, Albon, Bottas with the pits had we um, not had that wind change. That's on me. My fault. We should have won the race. But yeah, let's look at the standings as that was a pretty hectic weekend. Another podium for us, and that is now us five points behind Bottas and six behind Leclerc. Verstappen seven behind me as Lando is within a point of Piastri. Sergio Perez still P8, but gives himself a nice little boost in the standings with that points finish. Constructors, Mercedes still lead the way and increase their gap over Ferrari as they bounce back this weekend. We are only 34 points, no, 44 points behind Ferrari, so 30, no, 43 points behind Ferrari, my, my math is terrible. Anyway, point is, we're in the fight. It's a P2 fight for the Constructors and that is a big, 
big statement. Either way, guys, hopefully you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. A great weekend, some good points, and we go on to the next one. As always, a big shout out to the members for supporting the channel as always. And yeah, subscribe if you're new. Let's try and reach 100k mark by the end of the year. Check out the two videos on screen. And yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, and let's go back from me.